the director of Russia and Europe at the U.S. Institute of Peace, and he joins us now live from Washington, D.C. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us here on the News Hour today. Thank what do you, you make of um, what our reporter from Moscow just said there on Russia's plans for the Donbass region? Do you think that they will eventually gain full control of the Donbass? Well, actually, I think it's a typical Kremlin propaganda lie, and there's there's claiming control and there's actual control. The uh, town you mentioned has been under uh, uh, fighting in the last few days. Russia has made some advances, but in elsewhere in that region, Russia has been stopped cold and is experiencing heavy losses. Uh, the problem remains that Russia, having initial setbacks elsewhere around Kiev and in the north, around Kharkiv, is now focusing its attention on this region. It may indeed make some uh, gains in the week, days to come. It's not yet clear that that's the case mm -hmm. in general, and it's not clear they can hold them once they claim that they, they're in, in charge of some territory. Right, and in contrary to the liking of Russia, NATO is set to expand if Sweden and Finland can, of course, sort out uh, Turkey's security concerns as it's laid out on the table. What do you think that would mean for Russia if Sweden and Finland do indeed enjoy, do indeed join uh, the alliance? Well, at the end of the day, I'm sure they probably will, despite Mr. Erdogan's clever and perhaps somewhat effective uh, 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 objections at the moment. Uh, this is uh, the absurdity of the whole war, tragic as it is. It's, it's Putin's invasion of Russia, which has triggered NATO expansion when in fact NATO's expansion was supposedly why Putin invaded Ukraine. So it's a circular thing which shows the absurdity of Russia's claims to be threatened by the alliance. NATO does not threaten Russia. NATO has purposely downplayed its military presence among alliance members, but it's frankly Russia's aggression uh, that, that has precipitated this, this uh, unprecedented and unusual is seeking of membership by Finland and Sweden. So at the end of the day, I think they will be members. Uh, at the end of the day, Russia will have to admit the absurdity of its position because NATO does not threaten Russia. Moreover, NATO, uh, mm -hmm. Russia, excuse me, does not have the military capability of stopping it. And that's what we're going to see in the next several weeks. Right. But we are hearing from uh, Moscow now saying that it plans to establish 12 military bases in the western part uh, of the country in response to the possible um, joining of Finland and Sweden uh, to the military lines. What would that mean for uh, the countries along that side of Russia's border? Well, they are long suspicious and wary, as you know, of Russia's behavior in any case. If that happens, as you say, and as the Kremlin has announced, Russia will be essentially overstretching its military even further, manning it with soldiers who have been subpar in their performance in Ukraine and stretching a defense budget uh, uh, even more than it's already stretched. So I don't think NATO has anything to worry about from however number of bases Russia establishes in the north. Uh, uh, the problem is really Russia's subpar military performance, which would be taken into account uh, in any NATO planning, which includes Finland and uh, Sweden. So mm -hmm. I think this is really something Russia has to do to show that it's responding in some way uh, it's not going to make much of a difference in the terms of the strategic balance. All right. The director of Russia and Europe at the U.S. Institute of Peace, Donald Jensen, thank you so much for joining us here on the NewsHour and thank sharing you. that insight with us.